moment. You can see them on your screen. Who is going to lock in? Who is going to go with what? Let's quickly glimpse down. You can see there's an Anivia in there. Mad Life actually over and over. Everybody random in pacing through everything. Yeah. If we thought there was an issue of people mousing <laughs> over a pick to get the crowd going <laughs> in normal draft, what's going to happen now? Well, Toys is holding out. He's the only one so far. We'll see which way this goes. Messiah on LeBlanc at the moment. That would be great to see. Of course, he's alongside Frog, and he's got that Anivia double lift with the Vayne. Everybody's holding their sort of their known champions right now. He needs a Twisted Fate switch of the Messiah. The only thing that's not switching back and forth rapidly right now are summoner spells. And currently, we have two ah. spikes each. Yeah, Ooh, that would yeah. show double jungle right there. It makes sense. Cool and Archie. That would mean Frog might actually end up being a top laner if they let Messiah go mid. Look at that crap. Probably can't even hear me right now. Well, the crowd is loving it, that's for sure. And uh, why not? Because this could be fantastic. There is one locked in. It is Elise. Elise has been locked in there. Double lift also locking in alongside yeah. Madlife, as you said. Lucian yeah. and Fresh. Cassidy as well is locked in for Messiah. Pantheon yeah, is another game. very strong early game jungler. So they are looking to try and combat <laughs> the Elise Lee Sin. Combo. I think they wanted the Twisted Fate. They're not happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, Toys is on Orianna. That's what he played in the Season 2 Worlds. All right, those are the teams. Now, right there. look at these double junglers. Because they both have Lee Sin, really the wild card is Elise Cocoon. Can you land your cocoon? If yeah. you do not, Pantheon is, doesn't have to aim his stun. Exactly. If you guys meet up in the jungle and Elise misses her cocoon, then it could be bad. If we're speaking about double jungle, Pantheon, Lee Sin, guaranteed Lee Sin skill shots, too, if they set the gank up right. Could be pretty dangerous. <laughs> yeah. So let's, Except, let's, let's hit, hit the champions quick. Junglers. Let's yeah. hit the champions quick. So Froggen on Aurelia, Lucian for double lift, Thresh for Mad Life, Lee Sin being picked up by Cool. So that's a double jungle. Alongside him is Archie, of course. On I'm trying to see what it is. Pantheon, yeah. of course, and of course Cassian, Cassian for, for Messiah. Messiah. Yeah. So on the other side, on the fire side is going to be Diamond on Elise. What we're in the game: Bjergsen on Lee Sin, Shy on Jace, Wei Xiao on Lucian, QTV on. Alistair, and of course, Toys on Oriana. So as the game is about to get underway, we want to know who you guys think is going to win this one. Use the hashtag IceWin or hashtag FireWin. Tweet it at LOL Esports, and we will find out who you guys at home feel will win. Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen, straight into the game, Ice versus Fire. Now, one of the most to me about Hexakill as a mode is the way that it changes the in-game economy of Summoner's Rift. Oh, uh, we're gonna get a really, yeah. really early invade here, though. Well, they don't see each other, so they keep talking just about the barely economy. Patched. Yeah. Okay, so because when you have a closed system and you keep the supply the same while increasing demand, I mean, all of the minions and all of the objectives are kept constant here, or you're yeah. adding two more players to the rift. That increases the cost of each objective. Talked right. about double junglers. If they both decide to go for one buff, you're going to have to commit more of your champions to that buff, and you have to commit more people to every objective that you want to take. Well, you could also just comment on how it's going to slow the game down a little bit, too, because as far as actual farm distribution, everyone's going to be getting slightly less gold. When you compare that to Earth, where you have Bjergsen with 15,000 gold at 14 minutes, this is most likely a much longer game. Passive gold generation will stay the same, yep. but everything else remains constant here. They just barely missed, by the way. That was such a <laughs> yeah. close pass with the two invades here. But we are going to start both of them on the red buffs, and both junglers are going to start the same buff. Now, let's discuss the risks of actually with double junglers trying to start two buffs. If yeah. you spread yourself thin, you very well could come out with a two buff start right when they spawn. However, it's much, much safer to just have both of them in one spot. Yeah, especially considering the added roaming on this map. It's very easy Ooh. to get caught. They're more interested in that red buff right now. So both of them are going with the riskier start. They want to get two buff starts. They're not going to be at the same buff. And it pays off for both teams because neither of them go for the collapse. So both teams, they figured out the red buff. Everybody knew there was going to be the steal. So let's have a look. What are the lanes developing like? It's going to be QTV alongside Wei Zhao down that bottom line, up against Doublelift and Mad Life. But we see Messiah, Messiah in the mid lane, of course, on that cast and up against Toys. This is what we wanted to see, ladies and gentlemen. The old world elite mid laner up against the old Taipei Assassins mid laner. We actually have incredibly cool lane matches, but there's going to be a lot of ganks. Oh, Bjergsen on that leaves in will take a hit. He's actually on SK Telecom's skin, I believe, as well. So gets a lot of damage on Messiah early on. Yeah, we get to see the fabled matchup here. However, as you said, there's going to be a lot more ganks with a lot more junglers. Up top, though, is where we're oh, at man. Isis. That's a lot of people game. going up there. 
Oh, the hook though down the bottom. There's going to be the kick landing. Archie does manage to catch on to a shy. We also saw Madlife landing that hook. QTV taken very low by the double life combo down this bottom lane. Double Lift must be really happy about playing alongside Madlife. I know I would be. Yeah, this lane is going to be really exciting. If Double Lift and Madlife don't do well, they are going to be so criticized by their format people because they should be the best. Well, those hooks keep on coming. There's a flag. QTV has to flash away from it this time around. A lot of summoner spells already blown in this bottom lane. And a lot of mana burned here for Madlife. He's constantly throwing out these hooks to get the advantage. Now he's actually completely dry. Double oh, invade coming man. out. Bjergsen and Diamond joining in towards Archie. Cool putting a lot of damage back down on towards them. They're going to try and transfer it around. Oh! Bjergsen taking low. Bjergsen goes down. He gets first blood in the meantime. Teleport comes out. Shine joins the party. He gets drops the hammer down. Rogan gets in to get one, but he's all on his own now because there's another two dropping down. Rogan's in trouble. That's going to be a triple kill. Would you believe it? And we see how they're fighting over the same amount of resources. We're going to see so many more fights early in this game because there's so much less for them to get. And I think it's really important how yesterday Team Fire was the more organized team. They're also the team with the only true jungler who when they went in there, they had the level advantage and they took this down even though they ended up getting first blood away. They're level threes versus level twos and they're also able to collapse better, much better, despite this being on the ice side of the map. It was great focus by them to both take down the least hit first, but then we see the teleports coming in. Chaos. As we said, everybody joins. Everybody's committed because they don't want to give up the jungle sides. It's so important for them. And the difference, obviously, Shy on that, Jace, is so strong. Oh, man, it's always gets uh -oh. jumped in. So many stuns just locking him down, and Messiah picks up the kill. We're going to see a lot of that. When there's two jugglers ganking, it's, it's bad enough to have to deal with the Pantheon early game. Oh dear. Basically what we're seeing is Hexakill is a test for how to deal with overpopulation because everybody's <laughs> getting desperate for gold. They're just going full on aggressive. Well, you gotta pick good skirmishers, I suppose. Yes, gotta pick good early game skirmishers because people are fighting tooth and nail for every little bit of gold. I mean, so let's talk about traditional top lanes. Froggen versus Shy in this top lane. He's got Froggen, double buff. The old mid laner up against him. But as you mentioned, Shy's yeah. got triple kill back there. How hard is that to go up against now? The, because he went tier, he's going to have a little bit of scaling where he has to catch up here as he gets aggression right now. But later, he should take over. Ooh, oh, man. So close. Now, if you hit that least in Q, you take it. Uh-oh, Archie's in trouble. There's a double combo. Bjergs and the Diamond ganging up once again. And Archie this time looks like he's not going to be able oh. to escape. Shy comes in, gets himself a four. My god, he's going to be a beast. Four kills with the weak early game build. He's going to have so much mana late game, he can actually carry very, very well on this Jace. If we think about this, this is Shy at the All-Star game on Jace. Last year, he destroyed the world as Jace, and he's doing it again in Hexakill. Well, cool and mad life joining in here. They can see they're pushing back onto Diamond once again. They got Froggen in support. He comes oh, out, gets the stun down on him. He's going to repel, manages to use mad life oh. as a flea, but he can see he gets caught up. Cool comes in, he gets the kill. Shy still has double buffs though, and he's spamming the gate. They're on the chase! Messiah locking down. Is he going to get the silence down? Shy wants Doubles. to be the focus. So much gold up in hand. It's Mad Life that gets the kill on his teammate. Uh, why wouldn't it be Mad Life? He made it up to the top lane. He's saying, double it. You can have fun down there, but there's too much happening on the map. He went up and got hey, the kill. Hey, we got this good five minutes maybe of the double lift Mad Life lane. Yeah. That's enough. They were doing well. They did well. Yeah, they proved it. Well, at the moment, it's definitely fire that are being the more aggressive. They're the ones that are pushing the invades. They are the ones that are in the jungle of ice. Messiah's trying to get going in this mid lane, though. Also, we got to watch which of these pair of junglers stay together more, because you do not get bonus experience from the actual jungle. However, your ganks are so much more potent. So that's the difference we just saw in that top lane. And I'd have to say that as far as sticking together, it's been the Bjergsen Diamond combo. Those guys are just basically holding hands through the jungle when they go for ganks. They're split up kind of for the first time right now, but the ganks with two people have been so much more effective. Yeah, just to try and clear the jungle more effectively right now, uh, the one buff that is up right now is blue. With two junglers, it's going to be even harder for a mid laner to get their double buff now or even just a single blue buff. Oh, we'll man. have to see if they can give it over to him. Archie is level three, so you can really see how the junglers are falling behind here. The overpopulation is starving out yeah. Archie at the moment, as he can't even get his own buffs. I actually understand a frog and going without Aurelia actually is quite a sneaky ploy, because obviously with the more players on the map, when he goes in for those big team fights, his, his passive is going to work even better. Well, speaking of that getting your own buffs, Jat, 
you actually will get do have that comeback mechanic. So Archie getting that red buff is going to be huge for him. It's so hard for him to even take it down, though. He's run completely oh, out of man, mana. Another so he has get no top. presence on the map. Nice dash there by Froggen trying to go in for Diamond, but he is in so much pain in that lane. Look at Shy. Just wait until he combines that tear with his longsword, and then the pain will really start to rain down. Yeah, man immune early for Shy will be absolutely on We're only eight minutes in. This has been much faster pace than I expected, actually. Yeah, I'm mean, telling you, man, people get desperate when <laughs> there's not as much on the board. <laughs> Everybody oh, wants yeah, that gold. The teleport coming in. QTV's taking all of the cooling damage. Froggen comes in. The headbutt does knock him away. Madlife pulls Froggen straight back in and double if gets the kill. Madlife has really been abusing his range advantage in that bottom lane. Both having Lucians, but the discrepancy between Alistar and Thresh is definitely apparent here, making some big plays. And it's interesting how he's actually rushed those boots of mobility on Thresh as well, knowing that there's so much roaming in this game with the double E sins and everyone ganking. He wants to be able to get there to throw lanterns and save lives. Or get kills. <laughs> All right, this turret about to go down, but it looks like a safe take for them. Now, the thing I want to point out is, yes, there's six people now, and each person still has oh. a trinket, but there's still not that much vision on the map. No, who cares about vision at this point? You got so many people, you yeah. got more walking wards. There you go. Well, they were considering the dragon, which would be possibly the first time we'd see a full-on six-on-six. There is a teleport for Shy Archie. He's going to find Bjergsen in that jungle, just tosses his spear his way. Diamond is ready and waiting to go in there, so Team Fire look like they want to start that jungle off. Dragon off. <laughs> Yeah. Shy, meanwhile, has been left alone in that top lane. He has his teleport ready for if that dragon does get started. He's going to put a lot of pain onto this turret, though. Double wave with a cannon minion. Yeah, Shy's actually going to have to start joining the fray because Team Ice has actually been able to pull off a fairly decent-sized advantage here. 1,000 gold, more roaming ganks. The fact that Messiah's at level 6 on Kassadin. They're really making stuff happen. Toys has got to watch out a little bit. Yeah, Cassidy is very, very scary when we do get to the late game against any mages. So Toys is going to have a hard time. Luckily for Team Fire, they've got a lot of attack damage on their team as well. We'll see how it develops. You can see in the top Ooh. three members stacking Messiah almost taking Toys down. It looks like the top turret is now the focus, though for Ice. They're really going all out for Shy here. I think we're going to see the turret pushing starting very soon as they're trying to make up for it on the bottom side as well. There are three Team Ice members near the red buff of Team Fire. Yeah, they've committed to up top. However, there was not much for them to get up there. Well, you can see in the mid lane, they're jumping on towards Bjergsen. and Bjergsen getting focused on a lot of damage, gets kicked into the wall, oh. escapes with a safeguard on Diamond. Escape in a four-man gank. Pretty damn impressive there. He did have to burn everything. But the interesting thing about that four-man gank, it's not like they sacrifice lanes because they have the people to share. Froggen has to take the top turn. I don't think any lane is going to be left for nobody to have experience in yeah. this. Somebody's always going to jump There out. are no free minions here, it seems. So Shy dropping the hammer in the top lane. Has got that man immunity and the Vampiric Scepter built up already. Of course, remember, he got that triple call at the start. He's the one that, once these team fights start, could make a big difference. But Froggen has done a really good job of keeping up with him. And I do want to say something, if I have a moment, about Kassadin. I was ready to talk about him if he made it <laughs> into the actual games, but he has been banned at the start of all of them. So with the new Kassadin, he actually gets more damage for level scaling than he used to. He used to hit his damage cap basically at level 13, but now so much of that damage has been moved into his W, and it gives such big mana return when he actually does land it. Kassadin really hits his peak actually at level 18 now, as opposed to around level 13. And if this game goes really long, that's when Messiah is absolutely going to take over. Well, the dragon goes down. You saw it there. So Team Fire do pull themselves back in. It's still just a 500 gold deficit between these teams. Still very close. And Shy still trying to put some work in to take that turret down. But Froggen not allowing him. He is doing his best up there. And he's also got another roaming support. Mad Life, you mentioned the mobility boots. He's made his way up top again, and they're collapsing on Shy. Oh, God. They're going to lock him down. There's the Flay. He knocks one away with the hammer. He's not going to be enough. He gets locked up. It's Madlife again with the kill on Shy. Now, Madlife went with those mobility boots. Meanwhile, Alistar hasn't been able to get any boots. He's investing in an early talisman. I kind of yeah. like this gambit for him, though, because even though early game, he won't have the mobility to move around, a team Mobility like Talisman is going to pay off really, really big towards that mid game when your whole team needs to be collapsing. Oh, 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 o
Yurk and a Wombo combo takes him down. Yurkson had no chance this time. Team Ice is absolutely taking control of this game. More mobility overall, no true jungler right now, but the Cassidy pick, just combined with all the other jumps like from Pantheon, are chasing fire down. Where's now, Diamond going? Where is he gonna run to? Where's he gonna hide? He manages to land the cocoon on Messiah, but he's just gonna catch on Rift Walk back on towards him. He's got Cool and Froggen coming in. Ooh, There's gonna be oh, yeah, double oh, up. Oh, no! The tower hit's not gonna land either. We do see Diamond going down to Froggen as well. Second time that Toys has barely escaped with his life. He is holding on in that mid lane, trying to fend off all these attackers that keep come visiting. Yeah, I mean, technically at the end of the game, he could land a six-man shockwave, but it's going to be a while until he's got a big impact because he is kind of a sitting duck Ooh. in a game full of hawks. You can see Shy once again, he's in trouble. Where's he going to run this? Three-man roaming team is just knocking him down once again, and it's an easy kill this time for Messiah. That basically felt like a replay. I could have sworn we saw yeah. that happen a few minutes ago. They are just camping him up top because he keeps trying to push his advantage. He doesn't actually have the damage yet to crush people, and he's dying to ganks. We talked about the build for him having to scale up a little bit, and they're just trying to head off that big threat before yeah. it gets into anything. This was, we knew it was going to happen yeah, to Diamond. can't run away that It far. was really just how much of those three champions' time can Diamond waste? Because if you can pull three champions, that's huge. That's half of the enemy team. Froggen's actually getting pretty strong amongst all. Ooh, well, he's got to dodge this. He flashed away. He does get caught out. Bjergsen's going to keep on chasing. As you Watch mentioned, him. but he's got no mana here. He can't engage. But Madlife is coming in. Madlife will join the party. There's the exhaust down. Oh, no. Now they're fancying it. There's the ultimate coming down. Madlife oh. just kites him around. Froggen gets the kill. Doesn't matter if you miss the play, if you hit the hook. I mean, that's, that's Madlife. He's going to land something on top of you. Froggen there. Going back to base, actually, with 2,700 gold. Ooh. We'll be able to purchase some real goodies. Uh, trying to do Wicked, his teammate, best service on Aurelia, just trying to win it with any matchup. He's doing quite well. And also, he's gone with the early speed build again that we did see from Soaz yeah, as well. Yeah, Alacrity Rush. He's uh, rushed this mobility before even completing that Trinity Force. Well, it definitely needs to try and work him down at the moment. We're seeing this mid lane. Toys and Masai, they haven't been able to go at it too much. Toys has managed to evade a lot of the damage being coming his way. It's Masai that's definitely been roaming around. Teleport going up towards the top lane. It is Froggen going up there. He's going to try and come around back run. on board Shy. Shy is wondering, uh -oh. which way am I going to go here? Froggen's going to chase him down. He's got no oh. support, though. He may actually be in trouble himself. Yeah, Froggen's on the Don't back side now. Shy's been able to kite him into the rest of the team. Camps around, Bjergsen joins the party. Shy, but he kicks him into the Baron pit. Not what he wanted, he regresses the Baron. And now the Baron's actually attacking. Messiah comes in, Bjergsen gets out of there. And now Messiah's in trouble. He gets locked up, pulverized headbutt, bounced around in the river, and he will get taken down. Meanwhile, down bottom, Team Ice are not going to let that aggression go without a answer. They're shoving down this mid lane turret, or bottom lane turret. They've already taken it. Yeah, and there had to be so much invested to kill Messiah and Froggen that the other four people were able to do something. These guys, obviously they don't have the best communication because they're all speaking different languages, <laughs> but the instincts are still there. They're doing very well to push objectives when members get killed. They're rushing into the mid lane. You can see Diamond and Toys here, but they need to get the hell out of there. Madlife's chasing, he has got those Moby boots on, but again, he's not gonna catch on towards them. And it's another tower picked up by fire. Two outer turrets taken. Now there's more room on the map here. We need to see another good ultimate from oh, Pantheon, oh, from man. Archie. The Chinese battle, Wei Zhao yeah. versus Cool, <laughs> and he uses that minion to sneak out there. Wei Zhao didn't want any of that. It's not a very exciting duel. But you can see he just had a Spirit of the Other Lizard. He would not have been able to take on a Bloodthirster Lucian in that duel. He, uh, he had to get away. All right, we are getting towards the stage of the game where we will be able to see 12 champion fights here. It's going to yeah. be chaotic. A it's going to be all about the first CC to land because the focus from a six-man team will annihilate a person much quicker than in a normal team fight. And if we're actually thinking about AOE spells or AOE crowd control, I'd say Team Fire has a bit of an edge. Alistair plus Oriana, the uh, cow ball combo, if they could actually pull it <laughs> off against a highly mobile team here in ICE, would be good. The gold is close enough to make team fights be able to swing it. I think a big part of this is going to have to go on Archie's shoulders with the Pantheon Ultimate because it can be a devastating tool. Yeah. If you can get the entire team of uh, team Fire spreading out and trying to run away from him, then it'll be great for them. But you can also land skill shot CCs like Cocoon right onto him. And he is just so squishy, though, which makes this more difficult. It's about to happen, though. Six people in the middle. There's the hook. It lands on Diamond. He repels straight Big out of it. Bam! Big pulverize, catching four members of Ice out. QTV with that ultimate running takes a lot of the damage from Ice there. And now Ice are running. 
Yeah, and Alistair was just a little bit too far ahead of the shockwave there. They didn't use it. The ball could not be on his head. That would have been devastating. Small opportunity missed. Now he's pretty much out of the fight. No, an Alistair at half-life with no ultimate, no flash, is not going to provide a whole lot for the team. Well, while this is all happening, Froggen's keeping that top wave pushing. Remember, they did take down that inner turret already, so someone is going to have to deal with that inhibitor turret push while Ice continue to drag them towards the dragon. They also have top lane giant minion wave. They want that to crash onto the turret. I mean, this is just going to be a forced fight. Alistair's been able to heal up a little bit. They do have the Jace Gate to try and get in there. They don't want a sloppy initiation because that would mean potentially a Hexakill. Really, the loser here is the Dragon, getting attacked from all oh, sides. Oh, wow. And it is the burst from Team Fire to take it. Four smites in the game and a Jace takes the Dragon. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> That's the second Dragon of the game for Fire as well, and that keeps them within that gold. You can see there's both equal so far. Bjergsen's caught out once again, though. Pantheon will be man dropping on towards him. Cool actually kicked him almost out of his radius. But five members, when they're on you, you're not going to escape. Great job by Team Ice, recognizing teleport up top from Shy. He's not going to be there. This is our time to engage, and they grab a kill. Yeah, maybe we're going to see a six-man siege here. This turret is completely untouched, but they do hold the one-man advantage. 65 turret dive, though, cannot be a good idea. They're going to keep on pushing through here. There, it's going to be Froggen coming around the side. Five men straight in towards it. QTV taken low. Froggen does get taken down by Toys in the meanwhile. Messiah now, he's having to back out of there. As Shai realizes they've still got that tower. Why not keep pushing this advantage? Double it takes a lot of damage. Artie gets wrecked. Shai manages to take him down. They continue to push. they got the acceleration game. But again, the calling is enough to stop them in their tracks. And that's just what happened. They dove into the turret, but they didn't actually have a big enough advantage percentage-wise as far as people go. There's just so many things to keep track of in this game. <laughs> because there are six different ultimates, six different flash timers. You really just have to have everyone on the same page as long as you all commit to it. Yeah, as far as instinct goes, you're thinking, they got a guy dead and we got a few <laughs> people low. This is probably fine, right? But there's an extra person. Alistar's already coming back up. That was really bad for uh, Team Ice there. Froggen, especially with that mobility build, jumping in very early, can't take too much damage. Oh, what a spike from Cool! Oh, sneaky. Cool comes around on his... Chinese compatriot Wei Zhao and sneaks in there. Of course, Cool coming in from OMG as well was uh, considered the mid laner before yeah. uh, Xi Yang managed to finally get his his uh, visa to arrive here. So Ward being placed on Baron. That's potentially an early target because they're hitting the 20 minute mark here. Sneaky little pink ward that has been in there for a while here from Team Fire though. Froggen strong in a 1v1 though. Oh, Look out! Wow. Wow. Froggen just decimated Shy now in that top lane. Showing why Aurelia, a lot of people pick that into a Jace. If they actually get to even see the matchup, it's a great choice when she can get on him and stick to him with all this mobility that he's built up. Pretty easy one versus one. Messiah giving up on a big wave of farm here. He realizes the fight may well be starting out in his mid lane. Yeah, the thing is, it's hard to get 1v1s in a game with six people. Now we've got a double fight. Oh, Bjergsen went way too deep. The communication not quite right with the rest of Fire here. And Ice are going to capitalize. Oh, no. A great hook on Toys. He gets taken down. QTV is surrounded. He's got nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He's going to get knocked down. You can see Double Lift on towards him. While the rest of Ice chase down Wei Zhao. He's going to get caught out. Frog and, and a Do we see the first Baron? Combo. I mean, we probably could have. Baron for six would be a really valuable thing. But they also have mid lane turrets. Why do they choose? They want the monies right now. There is a smite <laughs> steal. And they're going to kill this Baron fast. The buddies and the purple flowers. Diamond is off the side. You can see Shy also in there. Oh, that's going to be big damage. This one. Oh, Shy oh, a big shockwave down on towards him. Diamond is ready and waiting to come in. Is he going to try and get in and get the smite still? He rebels. Oh, he comes smart. in towards him. No, not going to be enough. Cool out smites him. And Froggen gets himself another that's kill. That's an example of actually having to have good communication. These are just player instincts. Six yeah. people <laughs> stop doing Baron. All six people have to be on the same page. Stop doing Baron, immediately kill the jungler. They're such good players that they know this is the only response that you could yeah. possibly have. Nobody getting that low enough for Diamond to steal. Even after all that, it's a four to 5,000 gold advantage. It's looking like more momentum is in their favor, though. Really, that last fight, Doublelift and Madlife, even though they haven't been together too much, were the ones that really made that play. Doublelift went pretty much point blank range with the culling because he <laughs> knew the team had such a big advantage. Madlife landed the hook onto Cool, or sorry, onto Toys, which did most of the work for the rest of that fight, granting them the Baron. Well played from both of them. And also, now I want to take a look at how many ore items can people start stacking up? Because Correct. these are yeah. extremely important in Hexakill. Already, we've got one from the Pantheon. So he's going to be adding some defenses for the rest of the team. You mentioned how squishy he is personally, but at least he will be adding an ore if he can stay alive to the rest of his team. 
Froggen at the moment is starting to go man mode for his team as captain. 637, Triforce complete. Got out Giant's belt. You've talked about his alacrity boots he picked up really early on. Definitely turning the tables considering Shy was 4 and 0 oh at the start of this after that crazy triple kill he managed to pick up early on. And we also got to keep in mind Double have had 13 deaths versus the Carry Bjergsen last game. Now Double is 303 <laughs> and it's a 1 5 Bjergsen on the other side. I mean, they're trying to get some pretty big revenge here. Yeah, he's only Sid. They gotta give him Sonic here. <laughs> we'll see how it works out for them. Look at this, so a five man invade in the mid lane while Double Lift keeps him busy in the mid. All right, so swinging up to top here. It looks like we will have another Siege. The Baron buff is going to do a lot for Team Ice just because of the region. Keep your eyes on Mad Life, because if they land one of those hooks, things are going to happen very quickly, as we've seen so far. These are those big AoE fights. There is more AoE skills and crowd control on the side of fire, but they are behind. Can they land the right combos in order to get back in this game? The Baron buff on six is immensely valuable here. Well, see if we can get that Alistar Oriana combo going, because that is crucial. But like we said, it takes communication. It takes playing with another person for a right amount of time to really be able to get those down. Yeah, they don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you saw there, just the culling was used very early on from Double If. Weijia held his nerve on there. And again, them Shock Blasts just doing enough to keep him away. And as you mentioned, with the, the pulverize, the, the cow delivery system, I keep believe yeah. you called it, it's a great use of word for it, is exactly what could come out. And that's going to be a tricky problem for Ice. They're getting the picks right now, they're getting the objectives, but now they're down to those core turrets. Those a few inner turrets that are left and that base. It's going to be very hard for them to break it down. Looks like the Dragon's going to be the focus, so that's up in two seconds. So out of the Baron buff, they are getting a little bit of control of the map. They weren't able to take down the turret, but taking away Dragon is actually good. Granting gold to every member on the team, it has increased value. I always also want to mention another completed aura here. Now both teams actually have somebody with the defensive stats. Yeah, and Doublelift has been farming a whole bunch when you consider they're having to split the farm amongst their six-person team. 220 at 24 and a half minutes is a bunch of it. I like how you mentioned which players are going to play to make themselves look good <laughs> and which players are going to play for the team and trying to get the team to win. Technically, and Double is doing both right he's now. He's actually doing both. He's yeah. playing extremely well, and he's back to his old ways getting as much CS as he can. It says something even more on Hexakill because there are three lanes and more people that are fighting over that CS. Yeah. Oh, fight and juggle. Well, you can see Messiah actually getting caught out here. Bjergsen is going to follow. The rest of his team are close by. You can see that lantern dangling out there from Mad Life. And Messiah is safe for now. What I did quickly want to mention is the fact that Warmogs has been built by Cool early on as his first item on Lee Sin. Now, Warmog is pretty good right when you get it. It's a huge burst of HP. However, if you're going for the long run defensive items, then it's more efficient to go with those Randuins and with uh, your magic resistance choice, item of choice. Oh, there's going to be tons of damage coming out of ice now. The double Trinity Force has been completed. Double Lift has that along with Froggen, who has now completed that Randian Zoman. So Froggen and Cool, if they're both going to be going in there, some big tanky targets alongside with a lot of damage to back it up. Ice are looking good. Of course, they have that 10 kill advantage. And overall, in gold, you can see it's a 7,000 gold lead so far. They're in a commanding position, but as we saw in the top lane, they're still a little unsure about how to break down the defense of that six-man yeah. line from fire. The game is definitely slow down and that's one of the things that happens in Hexakill as far as trying to pull people out of position there's one more person you have to pull out of position and it is much harder to siege against six as it is with five there's still the same number of minions and you need to be able to clear it. especially with a team comp like this that team ice are running they don't have a good way of taking down a turret six versus six I mean they have so much melee here even though Cassidy and Messiah here has completed the death cap on top of his charged up rod of ages it's so dangerous for him to go in. Because yeah. of that AoE that you keep talking about on Team Fire, they have a very e uh, real chance of easily defending these turrets. And that bottom lane was exposed very early on, remember. They're actually looking to try and get around the back of Messiah there. I don't think that's going to work out very tricky to hold down a Cassidy. They're still trying to work in advantage. That's what he said. You can see they're trying to gather around for the mid lane. Oh, oh wow. wow, that's a shot by pulling him in. And De Bjergsen gets away. Cool's going to try and chase on towards him. Flash is out of the Sonic Wave, and instead he's going to get caught down. That's going to be the tower going down. That's the objective they were after. And now you can see Cool. He's going back in. He's going to get engaged upon, though. Messiah backs him up. He tries to catch on towards Diamond. A lot of damage coming out. The Cooling landing on towards him. QT runs, runs interference. Diamond taking so, so low with the Ignite running. Is it going to be enough? The heal comes out from QTV oh. and holds him just alive.
Now, this is really interesting because with six people, the breaking point for C just comes much quicker. We see them spreading out, trying to defend all three lanes, and somebody eventually gets caught out. So Resulting another in tower. two turrets. Another tower, as you said. They were the two turrets. The Baron had run out. They finally managed to break the siege. It was actually down to Cool and Frogan diving on someone in that jungle, eventually stepping out of position. Yeah, honestly, that was Bjergsen getting caught out right at the start, costing them once again. Yes, they could hold fairly well, but when that happened, chaos ensued. They missed the shockwave that they needed to hold them off, and that's the big reason they lost that fight. If you're going to be defending, trying to defend all three lanes at once, then the, the breaking point will come up pretty soon as Team Ice do have the potential to dive very quickly. They have that Pantheon as well. They can just go for a straight on tower dive, and there's so much damage on the field that their target, if, you, if your team is split up, they'll take you out very quickly. Well, there is, as you mentioned, a lot of damage on the field. You look at Shai, he's finally completed that uh, Man Immune, he's can turn it to the Muru Man, he's got that uh, Last Whisper in that and the Brutalizer he had very early on. But again, if you look at Doublelift, he's now got himself the Last Whisper stacked alongside that Bloodthirst yeah. and Trinity Force. Rabadon's death caps are popping in left and right. You can see Zonny's Hourglass was picked up by Toys as well. He knows he's going to be the focus target. Everybody's rich! <laughs> Everybody's rich. Everybody's got a lot of minions. There's been a lot of kills so far. Uh -oh. There could be more coming in in a moment. Doublelift actually catching on towards you see the Colin is going to take him down. The ulti not enough. Here comes the Grand Skyfall on towards Toys. Toys flashes away. He's got a Zonia as he uses it a little bit too late there. He's going to get taken down. Double and putting the damage back on towards Bjergsen. He wants to get revenge. He gets Wei Zhao instead. And it's a Lucian Lucian. And Ice is just showing how they can pile on and chase for seemingly forever. Diamond is way outside. And Ice is coming. Yeah, they're going to chase him down. I don't think he's going to be able to escape. This one cools. Running interference, the rest of Ice oh. flaps around towards him. Baron is now back up, oh. and that is where they're going. Another Baron for Team Ice. We are definitely seeing a refocused team here. They took that loss in rapid fire mode yeah. very, very personally. Double Lift and Mad Life especially have been spamming duo Q together. They really wanted to come back strong in this game. Yeah, I know Doublelift was trying a lot to get his team going together. Let's take another look at this fight. It was Doublelift leading the charge, really, finishing off QTV with that culling. But he was going to be dead anyway. Oh, and Jung flash, and he still died. They flashed back into the culling. Yeah. Yeah, big thing here is, once again, the Shockwave couldn't hit that really highly mobile Team Ice. It's nothing against Toys here. It's almost impossible to land a good Shockwave on a team that is so mobile. Once the AoE threats were down in Alistair and Orianna, they just piled on top. Didn't matter. Yeah, fantastic start though, and a fantastic turnaround because you gotta Ooh. remember, Fi had that triple kill early on. Frogger chasing that. down Shy, and this is really one of the big differences. Shy started off so oh. strong, headbutt comes out from QTV. Not giving but he's up, gonna play surge onto a mini, and he may be enough to close him down. No, the speed comes out with the shock, uh, sorry, the acceleration. They're, they're still not giving up. Mad Life's trying to cut them off with his mobility boots, and cool on the other side getting caught. Oh, there's gonna be Archie jumping straight on towards him. Mad Life plays him back in there, and it will be the kill for Archie. Meanwhile, we we also see QTV going down to Messiah. And this is just Ice being really far ahead. The second Baron, they popped the locket on the turret. And meanwhile, Cool didn't even die on the other side. Well, Mobility really paying off for them. Oh, there's the here. fight. Oh, Wei Zhao getting away from this one. Cool is so tanky now. He's starting to stack that damage on as well. Wei Zhao running for his life, but that inhibitor has finally gone down. That's Ice breaking the deadlock. Now they're going to close on towards Diamond. Diamond taking Ooh. all the cooling damage. Bjergsen goes in. Sacrificial lamp, but he doesn't manage to save with Diamond. Diamond goes down, and Froggen comes through. Toys is going to get that Zonya's Hourglass off, but he dies to Froggen as well, who is now on a killing spree. 9-3-10 for Froggen. The captain really lead from the front. 28 kills to 9, the inhibitor going down, Ice just piling on, there are still three big death towers and six big people coming up the mid lane for Ice. They definitely have their eyes on the Nexus turns now. Yeah, they're gonna pile straight in there, the Shockwave's just not doing enough damage anymore. Ice has a six-man pile on, doing the damage on the Nexus to it. One man, no, he will not go down, just about. Archie manages to pay the price, but it's another double kill for Double Lift. Froggen takes himself down one turret. There's the second, and Ice will pull equal. It's all square, ladies and gentlemen. It was certainly a great performance by Fire yesterday, but Ice have took revenge. It's all square, 2-2. Two, two. It's all fun and games until somebody gets embarrassed. <laughs> Team Ice were embarrassed after Bjergsen's display on Rapid Fire mode, and they are not going to let that sit well. You're absolutely right. Look how happy Double it was after that one. He has kind of gotten back at Bjergsen for what happened yesterday. 7-0-7 seven, seven on that Lucian versus the 1-6 Bjergsen Lee Sin. He can't play everything, apparently. <laughs>
big smiles on the face of Ice there, as you say. They're really happy with that one. That's definitely going to hot up these challenge matches between these teams. That was Hexakill coming tomorrow. I believe his pick is 10. And that is going to be an interesting one. You feel Fire may have the edge in that. We'll see how it works out because at the moment, we're going to rest in the laurels. The victory that Ice have just had, and it was a pretty dominant one. 30 kills to 10 in the end. Dragon uh, displaying once again that popular European Aurelia build. I thought it was going to be dangerous for him to look for those duels with Jace that he hey. wants to go for in a six-man team because it's very hard to find a one versus one when there's more people, but he got it multiple times, yep. and in the end, that's what rewarded them with an inhibitor. Exekill is just such a strange game mode with all those gang threats coming around. An incredibly fed early on Jace in Chai was easily shut down because they just piled on junglers one after the other and he was never really able to adapt. They did a great job diverting their focus.